Good morning, guys. I'm here with Division Chief Steve Holland, and we are in the Fire Museum here at Station One. You guys are going to kind of start adding to this. We are on a 1920 fire truck now. So where, where did you guys see a need for this fire station and, and these pieces here in Lubbock? Okay, well, the fire department started in 1909, and over the years as the city grew, we had to add fire stations and stuff. And as those buildings got older, we needed to replace them. And this is actually the sixth station one uh, that Lubbock has had. Uh, over the years, it's been in different locations. One of the old uh, locations is now the Louise Underwood uh, Art Center at 6th and K. Uh, and so as, as times change and equipment changes, uh, and right now, fire equipment is so large that the, the old station one that we had, uh, we couldn't upgrade equipment because of the uh, size of the uh, apparatus bay doors. It's also safer to not have to backfire apparatus. So now all of our stations are pull through stations uh, where we can uh, just drive in and then drive out the other side. Uh, so over the years, we've just, you know, tried to improve uh, our facilities and uh, upgrade and, and uh, meet the times. And uh, uh, we felt like the location here at 19th and Texas would be a great location to, uh, to move uh, Station 1 to. Uh, we would put this museum in. Station 1 handles a lot of school tours where a lot of our kids come to, to learn about the fire department. So now they can see uh, the old and the new and uh, right. kind of go from there. So we're sitting on a 1920 fire truck right now. H how have things changed? And we, we have a few other pieces from that are a bit dated. Right. Uh, we have a a pole that uh, came from the old Station One. We have a bell that was used back in 19, it was purchased in 1913, uh, and it was the alarm that sounded throughout the city to, uh, uh, of course, back then Lubbock was pretty small, and that bell would alert all the firefighters that uh, there was an, an alarm. And, wow. and as the city's grown, we've had to change with the technology, and now uh, we have alarms that go off at each station uh, over the uh, radio and stuff, and uh, the old pole uh, is here in the museum because uh, this is now we no longer have any two-story station. We just saw them making breakfast. Everybody's kind of fixing their plate. Is this what a normal morning here looks like? Uh, yeah, Tierra. Normally wake up calls about seven. These guys were up early because we had, they had a structure fire earlier this morning. Uh, so they're, we're kind of a little ahead of schedule today. But yeah, they get up, they fix breakfast, uh, and then they kind of get their day started. Uh, during the day, uh, they may have training, continuing education. Every year we uh, work all the fire hydrants in town, make sure those are working. We do fire safety surveys where we go to each commercial building and check for fire and life safety hazards. Or they may have some other type of uh, training that's going to be happening uh, during the day. So these firemen um, wake up here. They woke up here this morning. So how yeah. did the shifts work? Uh, they uh, come on at 6 o'clock in the evening. Uh, start their shift, uh, uh, and then uh, they stay here overnight. They sleep what what times they can sleep because. Uh, uh, oh, oh, and, and we, we are a live station. These guys are uh, actually still on duty, and so uh, we're getting a fire. Uh, I believe it would be a fire call because the chief and the truck are are going too. So. So this is live, you guys. As you can see, they just got a call in. We're heading out to the bays with right. them. This is exactly what they do when you guys get a yes, call. Yes, yes. They'll be getting in, getting their gear on, getting ready to go. Pardon me. Sorry. So they're heading out now? Yes, they'll be heading out. I didn't hear the address, but we also have uh, computers in the trucks where they get calls of the call sheets come in that show them uh, the address and then any pertinent information that they need uh, and apologize for the noise and stuff but like I said this is a, wow. a live fire station and uh, uh, this is what happens on a, a lot of times on a daily basis uh, we uh, uh, may be in the shower we may be eating breakfast or lunch uh, when that happens alarm goes off you drop what you're doing and here we go so uh, wow uh, okay, we're in the living quarters right now I'm with division chief Steve Holland and 
We just kind of saw real life what first responder life here at the fire station is like. I mean, right. they got called out on a fire. They are now back right. here right. at the fire station. So we're in their living quarters now. Right. And what all kind of well, do you guys have back here? You know, like we talked earlier, it's a 6 p.m. to 6 p.m. shift. So they live here uh, 24 hours uh, at a time. Uh, so they sleep here. Uh, we have uh, bathrooms. And, and now that we are... Uh, have women firefighters, we have segregated quarters. These are a little different than when I came on 28 years ago where it was a bunk style room and uh, uh, we all slept in one big room. Now we have a little bit more privacy, especially uh, because of the women firefighters, but uh, they keep their uh, bed rolls in here. When they show up at night, they uh, get their bed rolls out and ready to go for the evening. They keep uh, spare uniforms and clothes and, and they're able to uh, go into uh, you know the bathroom and take a shower after a fire so they can clean all those contaminants off of themselves uh, and get that done. But uh, they're basically here for 24 hours. Sometime during the day, uh, they'll start details and the details are getting the station ready for the next shift. They'll uh, clean the bathrooms, they'll wash their towels and their sheets, they'll uh, uh, mop all the floors in the station, they'll clean uh, the fire apparatus and get that ready and make sure that everything's ready for the next uh, crew to come in and uh, repeat the, that over for the next shift. And you mentioned to me uh, during the break that, you know, the, the food that they eat, they contribute to all of these things yeah, that they have here. Yeah, the city doesn't pay for our food or the TVs or the, the uh, cable that the guys use. They pitch into what we call a chow fund or a station fund. Uh, the cook takes the money from the chow fund. Uh, they go every shift and buy groceries, and he's responsible for budgeting that amount of money to make sure that he's got enough money for the the uh, all the shifts uh, that month to uh, prepare food. Uh, once they uh, and then, like I said, the station fund buys staples such as flour and sugar and those type of things that every shift uses, and then they pay for their cable TV and then usually have a little extra pool collecting in that so if a TV or, or something like that goes out they can replace it. We're in the Bay Area now of Fire Station 1 here and we have a few different trucks here so what are the differences? Okay every station has an engine which carries the water and hose and is our basic firefighting equipment and not five of the stations have aerial apparatus uh, that call, carry our JAWS units and uh, uh, specialized uh, ventilation tools, things like that. And then like at station one is our heavy rescue station. So we have the heavy rescue uh, truck here that carries all the specialized uh, equipment that they need to do any type of heavy rescue uh, stuff. And what you're seeing the guys do now, uh, we talked about station details earlier, like mopping the floors and stuff. Every day there's a, a station detail such as truck check day where they check all the fluids, they check the air pressure uh, in the tanks, they check for any kind of leaks in the equipment, stuff like that. Uh, they'll, they'll check out all of our chainsaws and our heavy uh, uh, cutting tools. They'll be starting those up here in a minute, make sure those are running, that they're full of fuel, those type of things. Uh, some stations that have grass, uh, yard days, one of the stations, uh, <laughs> and they're, uh, they'll cut the, the grass and all that. So we see so many different compartments in these trucks. These trucks are huge, but there's really no space left empty. I mean, you guys have everything you could possibly need right. when you get called out. You know, as we train and as we've learned things over the years, we've incorporated different types of tools and equipment uh, and things that we need to be able to respond to any emergency and have what we need uh, to do the job that, that's required of us. And you guys have a JAWS? Uh, the JAWS unit, yeah, we can walk around over here. And they're actually checking right now to make sure that uh, we've got plenty of fuel and stuff. But this is our JAWS unit that uh, run on uh, car wrecks where we have entrapments and uh, have to cut people out of those. Each of the trucks carry those. Uh, of course, the ladders are used for elevated master streams. If we were to have a huge fire, uh, we can use those or to get on a roof to 
uh, ventilate if we have a big fire, things like that. We're up here in the heavy rescue training area. So what all goes on up here, Steve? Well, in the new station, we've developed an area where the heavy rescue team can actually practice here at the station. It keeps our manpower in the territory where they need to respond. But we have some areas where they can practice trench rescue, uh, high angle rescue. Today, they're actually working on some confined space rescue where they're going to be hauling a victim up from uh, a confined space area. Uh, but there's, I mean, so many different things and everything is so precision and uh, you, they just have to practice, practice, practice to make sure that they're ready to go at any given moment just to make sure that, uh, that when they're called to do their job, they're ready to do it. So what exactly are we seeing right here? Uh, right here they've set up uh, this tripod system and uh, they set up their rope system to actually haul somebody up. Uh, if this would have been a storage bin, a grain elevator, something like that, uh, we'd have set one of our uh, personnel down into the confined space, uh, packaged the victim, uh, and then hauled the victim up and got them out and then uh, hauled up our uh, rescuer that we had sent down. And so this was kind of the simulation of getting everything set up, ready to go, uh, and then the final stages of that where they hauled up uh, our rescuer and they be, uh, begin to break down the, the equipment and stuff and get back in service, ready to go on the next call. You mentioned these trenches right here. How are these dealt with? Uh, any time that uh, there's a trench collapse and, and you know the digging trenches constantly putting in new water lines, sewer lines, something like that, uh, companies are supposed to use safety boxes to protect their employees, but sometimes things happen. We've had an incidences in the past uh, when they were building the Marsha Sharp uh, where a backhoe fell over into a trench and we had to get down in there and uh, get that uh, operator out of there. So they have equipment on the heavy rescue truck that we saw earlier that they actually start building the trench forms from the top down and uh, they can work their way down into the trench, get down there, uh, package the victim and get them ready for extrication. How often are these firefighters training in this heavy rescue area? Uh, here, the, since this is so new, it, it's kind of new, but once a quarter, every three months, they have a usually a full day uh, heavy rescue training exercise where uh, they'll go out and either train on, on one of the specialty st structural collapse, trench rescue, something like that. Uh, we're anticipating with this new equipment, with it being a little easier, that they'll run through some basics a little more often than that just to stay fresh because it is such a specialized uh, team that they have to really be up on up to speed and on their game and uh, right. our guys are but the more you practice the better you get at it. We are going to be learning about the bunker gear and all that these firefighters have to wear so this is kind of part of the morning routine make sure the gear is ready to go for the day. Actually when they get here at six o'clock at night they'll get make check all their gear make sure it's really good to go and and uh, have it on the truck ready to go so as soon as the alarm goes they're out there and in the gear. How long do they have to, to get this gear the on? The state standard says that we should be ready to go within one minute of the alarm, uh, getting out, getting your gear on, get on the truck, and get ready to go. All righty, Steve. Well, I'm going to let you hold my mic here. Jimmy, he's the rookie. Yeah. I've learned this morning he had to make breakfast for everybody. Um, we're going to race and see if I can get this gear on in a minute. So here's right. the mic, and somebody let us know when to go. Okay, as you can see, they're putting on their bunker boots and then they'll pull up their bunker pants uh, with their suspenders. The next thing they'll do is throw on a Nomex hood, which protects their hair uh, and their uh, any exposed skin once they have their face piece on. Uh, then, of course, the, the large bunker coat. Uh, this ensemble that they have on right now is what you'd see if they were out on a car wreck or something like that. Uh, if they were actually going into a structure fire, they'd have uh, they get their air pack and stuff on. Uh, as you can see, uh, Tara has her uh, uh, Tara has her gear on, and Jimmy's still going. But we're making Jimmy put his face piece on because this is how he would have to fully ensemble and be ready to go uh, at the time that uh, he would be getting on the truck, ready to go. Uh, and once he gets on the uh, fire truck. He has to uh, put his seat belt on. Everybody has to have be geared up in the seats with seat belts on before the engine ever moves. 
Way to go, Jimmy. We rocked it. <laughs> How quick was that? I know I was under a minute, you guys. That was that was fun. How heavy is this tank? Uh, total ensemble with bunker gear and everything. You're looking at about 65 to 70 pounds. My goodness. Well, thank you guys so much. This has been such a fun morning. Very neat to see all that you guys do. Thank you for everything that you do for us, guys. I'm out of breath, so back to you. <laughs>